Hello there and welcome to the first episode on my new channel Nerd World Order. If you are not familiar with me whatsoever, which you know, small YouTuber, you might not be, I actually have three other channels that came up before this one, which are Nerd World, Nerd World Films and Nerd World History, which are all linked in the description below if you want to check them out. Nerd World is all about things that are nerdy and general topics that interest me. Nerd World Films is a bit more specialised in the genre of movies, not things movie related. Nerd World History is what it sounds like. It is all things history related, mostly prehistory as something that really I find very passionate. And this channel is also on another subject that I'm rather interested in, and that's a certain level of macabre interest in all things dark and seedy and generally horrible. And that would be serial killers, mobsters, drug dealers and all those kinds of disreputable members of society who we are all fascinated by but wouldn't really want to meet on a night out. Now if we're really honest would we? But does this one. Found also in the links below as just to point this out, this is going to be a slightly long intro, so I'm going to put on the screen when how long this intro ends, so when the video will actually begin, if you want to skip to it. If you don't, thanks. Below are all the, also links to all the social medias that I'm on that I do occasionally check, although I'll admit not very often, but if you'd like to visit them and follow or like or whatever it is, go right ahead. And also, like, share, subscribe, and comment down below and hit the bell notification on this channel if you think it's worth it, and preferably on all of my channels if you think they're worth it. Before we get started, just like to reference, like many of my other channels, this video will be brought to you with my, in collaboration with my sponsor, Relentless Rebels, but we will talk about them later in the video. With all of that said, I think it's about time that we got started on this video, and if you've already clicked on the link, you know that this one is about Richard Kuklinski, the Iceman. Hitman, slash serial killer, basically, basically a, a psychopathic serial killer that found the perfect job killing people for money. So let's just get started on the life of Richard the Iceman Kuklinski. Born Richard Kuklinski, April 11th, 1935. Richard claimed that both of his parents were both violently abusive towards him. This, you could argue, created a perfect storm of nature and nurture, where as a child he says that he began killing neighborhood cats as probably a means of rebellion and also good times, Serial Killer 101. As he grew older and entered into his early teens, he began, after he left school in the eighth grade anyway, he began a series of odd jobs punctuated by minor crimes, theft, burglary, and he began his own entrepreneurial career selling bootlegged pornographic videotapes. This would lead him into obviously confrontations with the law and also into shadier interactions with other criminals. He claims that around this time period is when he began killing. These early criminal acts as a teenager would lead him to his first tentative connections to organized crime. The career that would define his life for the rest of his well, criminal career and up to the point of his later arrest in later life. But to review, the first person who in 1986 Kuklinski was arrested for the murder of was George Miliband. He was killed in 1980 after he met with Kuklinski about over a deal to sell his bootleg videotapes. His body was found stuffed into a barrel. The next was Luis Masque, also killed over a similar deal. He was last seen in 1981 and his partially decomposed body was found over a year later. The medical examiner found icy crystals in the body tissues. This was the first indication that the bodies might have been frozen, what would lead to the chilling, pun intended, moniker of 
the Iceman. Both of these men had been shot to death. The next was Gary Smith, who was a member, or should I say, a criminal associate of Kuklinski's, who was part of a string of burglaries that he'd been involved in. He had been poisoned with cyanide and then strangled. His body was found in a motel in 1982. The next was Daniel Deppner, another one part of the criminal gang of which he was associated. His body was found the following year. He had also been poisoned and the body of Paul Hoffman. He had disappeared in 1982 after trying to buy prescription drugs from Kuklinski. However, his body had never been discovered. It was only after the discovery of the third victim, Gary Smith, that the police opened a official investigation into the series of murders, which would eventually lead to his arrest. But it's important to look at some of the steps that led up to this point, rather than just jump straight into his arrest. As I said, he had become associated with organized crime and eventually had become an enforcer and hitman for several different crime families. Once he had graduated to the career of hired hitman, he worked for, as I said, three crime families, the Genovese, the Gambino, and the Cavalanti crime families. And as I said, there thus begun his career as a hitman. It should also be noted that after his arrest and subsequent sentencing, he has confessed, or at least stated, that he was guilty of over 100 other assassinations or murders, either on behalf of the families or of his own back, including one which was during his initiation where he states that they wanted to see if he was capable of killing someone. He figured, yeah, fine. They took him out for a drive, they stopped at the side of the road, they gave him a shotgun, they shouted a guy over who just happened to be walking and told him to shoot him. And the guy bent down into the window to see what they wanted. Kuklinski put the shotgun in his face and pulled the trigger, killing the man instantly and they just drove off. But there's no actual evidence that this ever took place, as is the case with several others of his crimes. But we'll cover a few of those little details in a little while. Like a bird on a tree. Now it may or may not shock you to learn that this man was married not once but twice. Now I'm not going to go a huge amount into detail about his family as they are innocent bystanders in this man's criminal career. But he married his first wife Linda and they later divorced and then would marry another Barbara. They would again later divorce, but with her it was more because of him being arrested for multiple counts of murder, which kind of soured the relationship. He also had several children, two sons from his first marriage, two daughters and a son from his second. But believe me, this man was not winning father of the year. Again, we're not going to name them here because I don't think that's right to do. But. There is a story that one of his daughters, which shows, I think, something of the realm in which the hostility he created in his household. He portrayed this image of a loving family man, when in reality he was something of a home tyrant. They knew better than to question where he was going, what he was doing, when he was there. If he came home late, there was blood on his clothes, you weren't to question it. This was a violent man who could flick between quite pleasant and jovial to psychotic rage fairly easily and his wives learned not to provoke that out of him by questioning what he was doing it was the same with his children although he was very protective over his daughters one of them rebelled against him because he was so protective he was overprotective of course because this was a very controlling individual and she stated in a later interview that the way in which she lost her virginity was at the age of 12 she lost her basically lost her virginity to a man in a white van a fully grown man just because she could because she felt that the only control she had over her own life was her own body and choosing who she was going to give her virginity to was something that she felt she could still control but i think that tells us more about the psychology of kuklinski than maybe his children of course they were damaged by him there is no doubt about that but he himself 
who was not a pleasant individual to live with. But that's his family. And there are many images circulating around the internet of him as a loving father, standing there next to a car with his wife, there in the family photo, smiling. Well, all the time he had bodies in a freezer in the garage. Prince. But before we go on to the final chapter of his rather depraved existence, let's talk about something a little more fun. And that would be my sponsor, Relentless Rebels. They do Viking style jewelry. They do alternative and kind of interesting jewelry. They are linked down below. Now, if you go to their website following that link, find anything you might like and use the promo code NERD20, all in capitals, when you reach checkout, you'll get a 20% discount on all of your purchases. Now, I should point out that that code can be used more than once. It's not just something you use the first time and that's it. You can use it again and again if you like what you buy. And what they send you is actually rather nice. I got a kind of nice uh, bracelet wolf clasp bracelet and more recently I just ordered a again wolf clasp Thor's hammer chain for around my neck which is gorgeous it's gold and silver in coloration most of the stuff's made from stainless steel but is high quality and also comes with a really nice little bag to keep it in as well as a little wooden box which is just really nice I'm gonna end up with loads of those damn things if you yeah, Think that's something you might like again follow the link down below and use the promo code nerd 20 it's good for the channel and hopefully it gets you a discount on something you might like but with that said let's get back into the video Forever free. You and Kuklinski was finally arrested in 1986 after agreeing to assist an undercover federal agent with a fictitious murder he subsequently went to trial and in 1988 was found guilty of all charges relating to Smith and Deppner. He also would later plead guilty to the murders of Miliband and Maskey and confess to the murder of Hoffman, but possibly due to the fact that no body was ever discovered, as well as other circumstantial evidence, plus waste of taxpayers' time to try and convict him on something that he may or may not have done considering his tendency to exaggerate and he was already convicted of four other murders no charges were brought in this case he was sentenced to two consecutive life sentences but in 2003 he also entered a guilty plea for the 1980 murder of a new york city police detective peter calibro which he did while the man was driving, pretending his car was broken down as the, at the side of the road, and as the police officer went to overtake him, he shot him through the window of the car with a shotgun. He would occasionally claim to have committed murders in a variety of different fashions. Kuklinski would occasionally say that he was curious to know how someone would die by crossbow, so he killed someone with a crossbow. Other times, if he was feeling particularly angry, he'd go out and he would beat someone to death to make himself feel better. As I said before, Prince. But there is a lot of conjecture as to whether or not he's really killed as many people as he states. The problem is a lot of the murders, there's simply no evidence other than his word that he did it. And although he has interviews with multiple psychiatrists, prison psychologists and other such people. Basically being a psychopath, he's prone to lying and exaggeration. He could just be trying to make himself sound more prolific. Now there's no doubt in anyone's mind that this man truly was a murderer, but whether he killed genuinely as many as over a hundred people as he claims is a matter for some debate. The debate being by people far more qualified to judge that than me. But all the same, he did claim to have murdered multiple more people, it's just no evidence was ever found. Or the police never detailed he looked into these crimes, because again, there was simply no evidence that these people existed that he says he murdered. Or there was no evidence that he was in any way connected to certain murders that he did claim that he had committed. Now, of course, we can't cover the Iceman without really saying why he's called the Iceman. Now it's natural to think that perhaps he's called the Iceman because he was so cold-blooded. 
But that's not the case at all. As I mentioned before, he'd have bodies in the freezer. It was a counter forensic technique. He didn't want the police to know when a person had been murdered. He could easily give himself an alibi if he could control the time the police believed the body was a man was killed. So after he killed them, he would bag them up and put them in a large chest freezer and keep them there for months before finally dumping the body. The police would then assume that this person had only just been murdered, but Kuklinski could make sure he was in a restaurant or out with friends in a pub in a very public place. So he couldn't possibly have done the murder. That was the idea. It's also a sensationalizing thing in the media. Since his arrest, the Iceman, given a moniker, is always a way to sort of give them a name in the public eye. He also was associated with another hitman who I may do another video on in the future, who used to drive an ice cream truck and poison people. And he was stated by Kuklinski as being a man that he greatly respected and liked and would then go and kill. But that's another story for another video about that individual. But this kind of world in which he lived made him almost a cult icon. Subsequently, since his arrest and death, and due to the fact that he did so many interviews, one quite famously which was the Iceman Chronicles, where there was a direct interview with him where he detailed his criminal life and everything, a much more extensive video than this one, I genuinely recommend it, it's a full documentary about three hours long, there's also been multiple books, papers wrote on him as well as other documentaries and many YouTube videos most likely, as well as a movie also about him simply titled The Iceman, starring Winona Ryder and others. This man became something, as I said, of a cult icon, he, but in reality he was a grotesque monster of a human being who is better off dead, and thankfully he is dead now. How he managed to avoid the death penalty is actually a little beyond me, but whether you're for the death penalty or against it is not really the context of this. This was a human being who devoted his life to crime and murder. And the world is a safer and better place without him and his criminal associates. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. It is the first one for this channel. It's possibly a little rough. Try and refine these a little bit, but as I said before, I do have three other channels that are linked below. Please check those out. If you did enjoy this video, please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below on... There are details about this man's life I know I have missed. Feel free to comment in the comments below and tell me anything I might not know which could interest me. And maybe one day in the future it could be something I can elaborate on even more. Otherwise, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you for watching. Check out my sponsor, Relentless Rebels, again linked in the description below. Use the promo code NO20 if you do like anything, all in capitals, and bye-bye.